He didn't invent the fade. All you got to do is go back and look at my hair way back in 96, <laughs> 95, 94. Right? I mean, you just go. He just said, I invented the fade. Yeah, there you go. I invented the fade. <laughs> All you got to do is go check the records. I had fades way back then. What's going on? It's me again, Keyshawn, and welcome to my show, Undisputed Presents, All Facts and No Breaks podcast. Joining me today to break down the top stories in sports and across the world is my friend and homegirl. I think I call her homegirl. <laughs> she is the co-host of FS1 Speak, Joy Taylor. How you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. This is a very nice set. That's a cool intro. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad exciting. you could make it, though. I was a little nervous that you would be too busy for me, you know, no. with all the hard work that you've been putting here at Fox. So. Thank you, but no, no, no. It's family. Yeah. yeah, and speaking of family, my son, Keyshawn Jr., yes, is, met. Is, yeah, is in the house with us, so he's going to kind of like moderate the situation and ask us some important questions to kick things off. Love that. I, I used to be a moderator on the show that you're on now. Well, I mean, that's, that's how I started. You can Fox. always come back <laughs> oh, no, if you no, want no, to. Let Keyshawn Jr. Not. do it. No, not you, not you. I'm talking about the undisputed. I'm undisputed. <laughs> so take us in. All right, let's get right into it. So Tom Brady had this to say on his Let's Go podcast when asked about Belichick not getting hired. Are you surprised Bill Belichick hasn't gotten a job in this cycle? You know, I don't, I, I don't know the criteria for hiring these guys, for hiring coaches. You know, I have never been a part of it. I mean, I'm surprised that the greatest coach ever doesn't have a job. You know, absolutely. But you know, I'm surprised a lot of things in the NFL. When I was a free agent, there was a lot of teams that didn't want me. There's a lot of things that happen that you know, for one reason or another, don't go exactly the way you, you know you think they should go. What, what profile picture is that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure, but Joy. That's <laughs> Okay, go ahead. No. Sorry. No worries. Joy, are you surprised, one, that Brady is referring to him as the greatest coach ever? And two, is Belichick not getting a head coaching job surprising to you? I'm not surprised that Tom Brady is referring to him as the greatest coach ever. He won six championships with him. He was in the building. Even though I don't know that they necessarily had the most pleasant breakup. You know, you know, the further away you get from something, you start to kind of romanticize it a little bit. And Tom's going to say the right thing. He knows if he doesn't say that, then the whole conversation is going to be about what Tom thinks about Bill and it's Super Bowl week. And you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm not surprised that he said, and, and also he may really think that. There are a lot of people that think that Bill Belichick is still the greatest coach of all time. He does have six championships. So that's not super surprising that he said that. I'm also not surprised that he didn't get a job. Yeah. I think very highly of Bill Belichick. I lived and suffered through that dynasty for a very long time. They were constantly beating everyone. It was miserable. And I remember what those teams looked like. I remember the different ways that they won. Dante Scarnecchia, the, the great defenses that Bill Belichick put together, the incredible players that he drafted. I just think that he didn't age well with the NFL. Sometimes great coaches do not evolve. And that doesn't take away from what they accomplished when the era served them, but it does make us evaluate the end of their career differently and it can sometimes paint what we think their success really came from, which is what I think happened with Bill Belichick. You know, Joy, Tom Brady's going to say that because he is the, the, he's the greatest coach that I've ever laid eyes on in my 50 years on this earth in the National Football League. And when you think about Nick Saban in college, the greatest college coach. Right. Right? Some would say, oh, it's Bear Bryant. Some would say it's this, that, and the other. Some would say that Belichick is not. Tom Brady is going to say it because if it wasn't for Bill Belichick, Tom Brady wouldn't be Tom Brady. He would probably be doing something different. The opportunity came. They drafted him in the sixth round. Not only did they draft him in the sixth round, they made an executive decision internally to move on from Drew Bledsoe mm -hmm. and give a guy an opportunity that took him to a Super Bowl, even though Bledsoe was the one that actually beat Pittsburgh in the AFC Championship game. So when I look at it, I'm like, okay, those people that don't like Belichick for because he has a different approach, a different style toward people, especially media and family members. And I'm close to him and close to his situation, so I kind of know a little bit more about who he is. Now, as far as getting a job, you're right. Probably not the best openings this year for him. It was only one opening that I could see 
a guy at 72 years old coaching, and that would be with a quarterback. And the only one team had a quarterback available, and that was the Chargers. Right, which I think would have been a terrible fit. It, it probably would have been a terrible fit, maybe depending on who he hires as his offensive coordinator. Belichick is a difficult person to communicate with. He just, he does, if you're not talking about football, he'll miss you with everything. It just, he, that's just how he is. He doesn't, he doesn't have time to shits and giggles and, and smiling and do, he just doesn't do that where other coaches do, you know? And people look at his personality and they say, oh, is, he doesn't talk to the media, he's dry. If you've never had an opportunity to sit down with him right. and have dinner and moments and stuff like that, then you would think that he is like off on the moon somewhere, really. I mean, that's the reality of it. I've had the luxury of doing that. Tom had the luxury of doing that. So we see it in a different light. When you look at the seven teams that was available, Antonio Pierce was getting the Raider job. As he should. Okay. Gerard Mayo was going to get the New England Patriot job. D did Belichick really honestly want to go to Carolina? Probably not, right? The Atlanta situation, he wanted more control and they was willing to give him. So he said, you know what? Never mind. Washington made a decision based on they wanted to go in another direction, even though he interviewed with some of the upper bosses and they wanted him, but whatever. They moved on in Seattle from a grandpa. Why would you get another grandpa, right? right? And so it's like, when you start to look at these job openings, that's why I say, really, the only one that I would say was the right fit probably could have been the Chargers. That was really the only one. I honestly thought the Commanders was a potential landing spot for him. No quarterback, I, though. I, I, yeah. The thing with Belichick for me is, I hear you on his personality. That's, that's not why I don't think he should or shouldn't get a job. I don't care if you're nice or not. When it comes to business, are you competent? No, but we, you no, nice. you and I, we don't care. No, but I know those a, lot, owners, a, lot of people, a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah you gotta owners, sell a room and all that. Per personally, if I'm an owner, I don't need you to be jolly. I need you to get the job done. Do you want somebody who makes you feel good or do you want somebody who wins? Yeah. The problem is, for a long time, Belichick didn't make you feel good, but he did make you win. Yeah. But as of late, the past few years, the Patriots, a team that he had full control over, got worse and worse and worse. And they made some very questionable decisions with the development of Mac Jones. You've got the defensive coordinator pairing up, like the offense coordinator. It was just, it was just was weird. And it, and it did not result in success. Yeah. So the, the positions that were open may not have been a good fit, but I also think that his reputation as a head coach and as somebody who had a lot of power in the building deteriorated over the past couple years. Now, for me, that doesn't take away completely from what he accomplished there because to me, what's done is done. If I have six championships, I'm not arguing with y'all. I'm not arguing with y'all. Argue amongst yourselves. I am walking into the Hall of Fame. I have six championships, which is more than any coach, yeah. two more than any other coach that's yeah. ever done it. And whether you think it's Tom Brady or it's me, it doesn't say that on the rings that yeah. I have. And I think we will give Tom Brady a lot of credit or most of the credit because of what it's looked like See, without I don't, him. See, I don't give Tom most of the credit. I give their teams equal credit because I look at early success in Tom Brady's career. But see, that's that's you where know? you and I are on the same page. I think that we just disregard that Tom Brady developed into a great player. Like, he did not walk into the league Tom Brady. He was no. a six-round pick. Now, listen, he's chosen. He's a chosen individual. Yes. Like some of us are just picked, and he's one of them. But a lot had to happen. It's a lot of those defenses were excellent. He played excellent. with incredible players, Hall, Hall of Famers, Famers all day. Had, had excellent coaching outside of Bill Belichick for years. And I'm like a culture nerd because I'm born and raised in Pittsburgh. So I know what a consistent franchise looks like and the success and the standard that they're held to. Yes. When you have very minimal changeover at the coaching position, when you have a style of play and identity within the building, when the standard from the person that works part time in the building to the owner is held at the same level, everybody walks in uh, expecting excellence from each other that permeates through everything that you do. And I think that that also leads to winning at a high level. And I think that because it does, because the Steelers have six championships, because the Patriots have six championships, consistency is boring. It's so boring, <laughs> but it's what leads to winning yeah. at a consistent level. It's all the little things. So I agree with you early in the, in his career, there were certainly incredible moments and, and the, the Super Bowl against Atlanta and the comeback for me cemented him as the greatest of all time. And that was Brady to me. Yeah. But there are a lot of things that you can point but to then, throughout then, the dynasty that could get, can give credit to a lot of different people. So you say the Atlanta comeback, right? Right. But then we could also point to the, the first greatest show on turf, 
with they stopped the Rams. Then we can point to the second greatest show on turf with Jared Goff and them, and they went in and did an amazing job in stopping them. And we also can point to Seattle and Malcolm Butler in drawing up a defensive play to understand the formation that came from Belichick to be able to say, I've been telling you all week long, this is what they're getting ready to do. People are going to say you hating, Keisha. No, no, I'm, it's not, I don't care. Man, fuck them. I don't people, care about people that. People are going to say you hating. I'm just, I I'm don't just disagree. saying. I don't disagree I'm with you. I'm just saying I'm laying out it all you're just saying what it. you're just saying what actually happens. Yes. <laughs> just saying what actually happens. Yes, it's the I, facts. I, it is the facts. I don't disagree with you. I think Tom Brady is the greatest football player who has ever played the game of football at the professional level. I think he is the greatest. If you disagree, I don't I don't know a lot of people that disagree, <laughs> but I, I think he is the greatest. And I think he does deserve a lot of the credit because he's on the field. He deserves he the a most ton position. of credit. And I'm I, I would give him a bigger slice of the credit pie. But I'm with you. All of those other things happen. You get a few more apples on the pie then. Yeah, he gets, he gets the big and that, scoop. And that's, and that's when okay. When the turkey come out, he, get, he gets that, a big slice. If he wants the dark meat, if he gets the drumstick, he, it's him first. And Joy, then everybody else can that's eat. That's okay, right? But the problem that I always have with this conversation is people act like Belichick just forgot how to coach football. And I now, don't think did, he forgot, but I do think that he did not he did not adjust with the times. But I see, think he I, rested, I, I think disagree he rested with work, that too. worked for him for... Two decades. No, nah, see, which is I understandable. No, nah, I disagree with that. He was adjusting with the times with Cam Newton. Cam got COVID. Cam got hurt. Then at the end of the day, that's a tough year. Like nah, there were so many players was, out. No, nah, but they was doing good. They was leading the league in rushing. Cam had, I think, thirteen touchdowns on the ground that year. Remember, they was doing well. Cam got hurt. So now he made that adjustment to the RPO game, and then they went back because his boy is Nick Saban, and then he said, "You know what? I'm gonna make a run." on this Mac Jones, where he made a mistake at and he corrected it, was hiring those two noodle nuts in Joe Judge and Matt Patricia that was not a good as choice. the offensive coordinator. But then yeah. he said, you know what, I made the, uh, I got to go get my guy Bill O'Brien. By then, I never felt good about Mac Jones, even his rookie season when they went to that weak playoffs. I, that Deacon I, and Duncan. I, didn't, uh, no. I don't think that Mac Jones is as bad as, as, as what's happened, though. I do think that the, that mistake really hindered his development. It, fe it feels that way. But if you really dive in his rookie season and really watch, he really wasn't like that. I'm sorry. But he's a rookie. No, I understand And then that. their second year, you, you just completely him, derailed but him. But you propped him up and they made a mistake in second season by derailing him. You're 100% correct. But he tried to fix it. So now he moves on because they part ways. And now they hire Gerard Mayo. But it's sometimes it's good to just separate. Think about Andy Reid in Philadelphia, Joy. He was rolling, and then all of a sudden, he hit a wall, and mm -hmm. they got stale, and then he found pay dirt again with Patrick Mahomes, or Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes. If you don't have a quarterback in the National Football League, you're going to get fired. What do you make of, because this is the argument for everyone who's watching who's outraged, <laughs> what do you make of Belichick's record without Tom Brady? Doesn't mean anything like to the, me. Like the fact that he was a losing had Doesn't a losing mean, record he, as a coach before Tom in Brady. In Cleveland, he had a losing record. Yes. He he was dealing with the Cleveland Browns and Art Modell. I hear you on the Cleveland Browns, I do. He was, he was dealing with that. He didn't even get but, an opportunity to turn it around the way he should have. Then he leaves and he comes and he starts to get a slow start as a new head coach in New England. Mm -hmm. But eventually he goes to Brady and the rest is history. Yeah. And then he showed you he can win with Mac, with Matt Castle. He won enough games. He didn't make it to the playoffs because whatever, they won 11 games. Mm -hmm. And that year, they just didn't. It was a weird the way weird the mathematics yeah. out, worked out. But that's an easy target to point to. And then if you go to the beginning of Cleveland and the end of New England and you put them together, he's certainly under 500. We all recognize yes. that. But I can guarantee you, he didn't forget how to coach football. I don't think he forgot how to coach football, but... I will say, as somebody, again, who suffered under Bill Belichick in that dynasty for two decades, I wish I, I, wish I hadn't seen it fall apart. Is that fair? That's fair. I that's that's fair. Thank you, but, Keyshawn Jr. But, but no, Joy, <laughs> it's fair. But if you don't have a quarterback, Pittsburgh Steelers, Ben <sighs> yeah, Roethlisberger, but, 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 like, you no, held on to him too long. We can't talk about Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season no, in no, his I entire under, career. I understand that. He never had a losing season. But that standard of going to Super Bowls and feeling a certain way, you held on to Big Ben too long. If oh, you for don't, sure. If you don't have a quarterback, Joy, you're going to lose. Yes, but without a quarterback, you've got Mike Tomlin having the Steelers in the playoffs. 
He's dealing with his third string quarterback. I understand. And still not having losing seasons. And it, it it's, it's, we can say the same thing it's about rough. Sean Payton. It's rough. We can say the same thing about a lot of coaches not that don't have quarterbacks. Not as bad as it is in New England. Well, New England got bad because of the the, the 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 standard that they had set for themselves in that 20 years. Oh, they were like one of the worst teams in the league this year. No, no, I'm saying it got bad. When you look at it, it's like, well, we're so used to But I'm so saying they're bad winning. by like any standard. Well, yeah, that's true too, though. So, yeah. so that's like, that's where I do, I do feel like he stayed too long because it's one thing to have a losing season. Yeah. It's one thing to not make the playoffs. It's one thing to get to the playoffs with Mac Jones and get blown out. That's one thing. But to to be in a league with a guy like Mike Tomlin, who's never had a, even a losing season on his third string quarterback, uh -huh. but still be able to put his players that he does have, that he's you know, brought in, yeah. in a position to win, I feel like it's a bit of an indictment of where Bill Belichick is at now. I don't think he forgot how to coach, but I do think you can stay in something too long. Absolutely. And the game has changed. Yeah. The game it has shifted. And when you don't have the ultimate eraser of Tom Brady in the building, it can expose some things. So that's, that's more of the reason why I'm disappointed in what's happened with Bill Belichick and the Patriots, because I, it does make this argument so difficult. Because I want to say, Bill Belichick is the greatest of all time. That's it. He has he's six Super Bowls. I watched him do it. I, I watched him beat my teams every single year. We never won. Never going to even win the division. It was awful. But then he stayed too long. And now I'm like, well, I got to hear you out. Yeah. Because it looks bad. Well, let's, let's talk about a quarterback situation right now. So Justin Jefferson was just on the Rich Eisen show and was asked about the QB situation in Minnesota. Here's what he had to say. Take a listen. Number one is who's your quarterback this coming year? Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know that. I have no idea. You know, it could be Kirk. It could be someone else. I have no idea. But how is Kirk? How is he? I mean, Kirk is, is great. Kirk is great as a as a teammate, you know, as a person. Uh, I mean, just seeing seeing the difference from, you know, having multiple quarterbacks yeah. throw to you versus, you know, having that one main quarterback. What's your sense of how it might play out with him? What do you, What's your sense of it, Justin? I mean, uh, I would like him to stay. Sure. I, would, I would love to have, have him stay and have that connection with him. Uh, you know, it's going to be difficult to, to create that new connection with, you know, a whole new quarterback. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit difficult situation. But, uh, I mean, I would, I would like to have him back. So, Justin Jefferson said he wants him to stay. I kind of think that's cap, but is he spitting <laughs> facts? <laughs> is he spitting facts or fiction when he says that, that he wants him to return? Uh, I like that you got your uh, your opinion in there. Yeah, had to. I mean, Justin Jefferson is is getting the ball, right? Yeah. I mean, we're talking about him the way we do because of the numbers that he has. I think Kirk is is a good quarterback. I think he's – I don't think he's great. I don't think he has a tremendous track record in the postseason. I think he's somewhere around a, you know, a Dak Prescott type of level. No? In the postseason? Or just in general? In general. Oh, I'm taking Dak Prescott all day long. Yeah, yeah I'm taking Dak yeah. too. But I don't think he's, you know, he's far behind Dak. <sighs> Dak has not had a whole lot of success in the postseason da da either. Dak is better than Kirk Cousins. Dak certainly is, this year was a great year for Dak Prescott. But Kirk Cousins, there's something missing. There's the 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 winning approach. Like there's something that's there that's missing. Like I don't love him. He doesn't, everything he does well will make you cry later. Yeah, you know, yeah. He'll Kirk, give Kirk's the ball gonna, to the other gonna, team gonna give it away, at the wrong yes. time. It's just, you know, I say Dak because we could say all the same things about Dak. I do think Dak is is better than Kirk Cousins, yeah. but I don't think that Justin Jefferson suffers no. because of Kirk Cousins is, is mostly what I'm trying to say. And I think that a lot of teams would, would do well with Kirk Cousins. I don't know if Kirk is somebody that you're going to win a Super Bowl with. I think he's somebody you could win a playoff game with. You can win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins, but everything has to be right. But that's see that's why I don't that's why I don't like to qualify it like that because when is everything right? When well, is every, everything perfect? Every, everything is everything is right. You need luck to go your way. Everything's got to be right. Everyone's got to be healthy. You got to have the perfect scheme. He's got to make no mistakes. He's got to make the winning play. He's got to be clutch it, when, when when you need it from him. Like you, you know this. It's crazy hard to win a Super Bowl. It's super oh, yeah, hard it's to hard. get to a Super Bowl. Yeah. It's super hard to get to an AFC Championship game. So to be able to do that, there has to be some of that in you. Yeah, but whether, you gotta, whether you're super talented or not. But no, every everything has to align perfectly. There's no question about it. For even the greatest quarterbacks that ever played. Correct. But he could get to a Super Bowl and win it in the right situation. 
If you take a Kirk Cousins and you drop him in San Francisco, mm -hmm. that's a right situation because he knows what to do with him. You look at you look at Russell Wilson in Seattle. That was the right situation because you can run the football. You mm -hmm. had a lights out defense, and you every now and then you could take a shot downfield, and that's the right situation. We won with Brad Johnson. Many people would think Brad Johnson is just horrible. Even though they don't know nothing about quarterbacks, they're going to tell you he's horrible. <laughs> and I'd say no. But Brad did everything the right way. He didn't get a ball to the other team, okay? We had a hell of a defense. Obviously, we had some killer receivers. And we could run the football. Right, obviously. It, everything was perfect for us. Aligned up perfectly. Now, But a big part of that is not making mistakes. Yeah, you can't make the mistakes. No, you can't make mistakes at all. You can't get a ball to the other team. But what was one of the things that you said that Kirk does? Yeah, he's gonna get a ball to the other team. But if you with the right, <laughs> but if you with the right coach, though, Joy, he he's takes gonna, that away from you it. and won't let you. Remember, think San Francisco, Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. What did they do when they went to the Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo against Minnesota? They said, no, 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 no. You didn't get ready to lose this game. Come stand your ass over here with me <laughs> and hand the football off. Right. Against Green Bay, they said, no, 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 no. Come stand over here and hand the football off. Then when they needed him to, to make the throws in the Super Bowl, he couldn't do it. Correct. Because he just wasn't that guy. That's what worries me about Kirk. Yeah. Now, I, again, I like Kirk. I think Washington should have stuck with Kirk. Washington's had I don't know, quarterbacks. 15 quarterbacks yeah, since they moved on from Kirk Cousins. Like, they would have they would have made the right choice with yeah. staying with him. I think he provides consistency. I think he's somebody that they, they like in the locker room. I think that's pretty obvious. So, I don't I, – again, I don't think he – you can do worse than Kirk Cousins, yeah. I guess. So to answer the question about Justin Jefferson, I don't think he suffers because of Kirk Cousins. Obviously, he could be with better quarterbacks. Yeah, but sometimes... But to just say, like, okay, let's just bring somebody else in. Every time we talk about, okay, we could do better than this guy. Who? Where? Where are you trading for? Where yeah. are you drafting for? Yeah. It's not like a quarterback store you can go to and be like, <laughs> oh, I don't like this guy, like with these features. That's just not how it works. So yeah. wins above replacement, Where? That that is my question, and that sucks. That's the that's that's the reality of how the league works. You can't just automatically go get the guy. Not that you shouldn't keep trying, but I, I don't know where he's going to end up or where Minnesota ends up if they do end up not keeping him. Justin Jefferson should just be happy because I, as somebody that had eighteen quarterbacks in eleven seasons, Whew. you don't want to keep switching quarterbacks, buddy. That ain't that's not it. And that's a that is a reality. That's what that's why I brought up Washington because people used to kill Kirk in Washington. Oh, he's not good enough. Da, da, da. Okay, maybe he's not. How many times are you going to keep trying to replace him? Yeah, because your your organization is in destitute now, having gone through all these different quarterbacks trying to replace somebody that maybe not isn't the most elite quarterback in the league, but is somebody that can win games and put up numbers. So okay, Joy. So then fill in the blank for me here. Kirk Cousins will sign with the blank next year. I mean, I honestly wouldn't mind Kirk in, in Pittsburgh. I know we're not going to do that. Heller's off camera laughing at me. Um, the Raiders are Raiders are going to go with a young quarterback. Why you, you, no, you don't like Ra that? No, I'm saying Raiders ain't messing no, with him. No, Raiders aren't messing with him. Um, Minnesota. He, I, I think he'll be back in Minnesota. Yeah, stay yeah. in Minnesota. I, I think he will be back in Minnesota. If you, he isn't in Minnesota, assuming this question is that he's not in Minnesota, um, what are places that need a quarterback? I don't think he goes back to Washington. No, no, he'll, he'll be in Baker's Minnesota. Gonna be, in Baker's going to be. Baker's going to be there. I think they're going to stick with Baker. Atlanta's kind of interesting, but they're high ups in the draft, so they're going to end the, up probably drafting I, I a quarterback. Can, I can see Atlanta looking at him just because of the relationship that Raheem has with Sean McVay. Mm -hmm. Sean McVay and company coached Kirk Cousins in Washington. In Washington, on top of that, Kevin O'Connell comes from that whole circuit of players. Right. I could I could see him make it. I could see Atlanta. I mean, it's like a bridge it. situation. Yeah. 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 A little bridge situation. Yeah, but I'm with you. I think he stays in Minnesota. I think he's there. So the NFL honors are tonight, but the fan vote is already in. NFL on Fox polled our fans on each category, and we need a fact check on it. First and foremost, no surprises here, Lamar Jackson wins the MVP. Did the way Lamar went off in the playoffs make you feel any differently about him winning the regular season award? No, it's a regular season award. I yeah, mean, it's, it's a regular season award. But but I do like that he went to the AFC Championship game because even though it is a regular season award, we tend to kill guys that win this award and don't 
perform yes. in the postseason. I mean, there's an expectation if you are the MVP and your team is the best team in your conference that you should be in the AFC championship game, which is where they were. I know it was a disappointing performance overall in that game, and we probably expected it to be better, especially considering that their defense was as good as it was this year. But I think he's never been there before. So it's it's hard. It's very hard to win in the league. It's very hard to win in the postseason. It's hard to get to the AFC Championship game. It was the first time that he was there. So I think it validates the MVP this year. And it was a very weird, weird year for quarterbacks. I, I'm, a, I'm a defensive girl, as you know. So I don't think that the defenses in the league got as much credit as they deserved this year. There were way better defenses in, this, in the league this year than there were offenses, which is why the MVP was such a contested conversation throughout the year. There was no clear MVP really until that game with Lamar Jackson and Brock Purdy. And we know how that went. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think if you look at the numbers this year, it doesn't look as pretty as we would have wanted it to. And I think that's because the real MVP this year is whoever ends up winning the defensive player of the year, because I think the defenses were really stepped up this year. They played at an extremely high level and made things very difficult for the quarterbacks and offenses this year. That's why the, the conversation was as testy as it was. You know, they keep moving the goalposts on Lamar. He can't win a playoff game, he wins one. Right. Can't take a team to the championship game, he does that. Yep. Then you look at the numbers, it's not the same numbers as when he won. Back in 2019, he won the MVP, the numbers are different. All numbers across the board offensively are down. That's, yeah, exactly. They're just down. So, But the eye gate tells me he's the best player in football in the regular season. Oh, just yeah. The I, I absolutely agree. I'm says, not saying in any way that it's not, it's not valid. He absolutely deserves the MVP. He w did a tremendous job. He was the best player on the field. The two best teams matched up, and he was the best player on the field, Yes. period. So he absolutely deserves this. I'm glad he's winning it. I, I, he, he's an incredible player, in no way am I taking that away. I'm just saying that I do think that the defenses did not get as much credit. You're saying all the offensive numbers are down. There's a reason for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, but the defensive players, I mean, if there was... They're not going to give the MVP Unless the somebody player. had 30 sacks or something weird like that happened. Then, yeah. And it was more of a hole. Like, yeah. at, 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 like the Kansas City defense is a big reason why Kansas City is in the Super Bowl. Obviously, the Baltimore defense was an extremely elite. San Francisco's defense, we can go down the line, but... Lamar absolutely deserves the MVP. They got that right. They got it right. Okay. Well, moving on, the fans voted Christian McCaffrey as the Offensive Player of the Year. Did they get that one right? Yeah, I think they got it right. I mean, you could... Uh, Christian McCaffrey, who else would be in a run? And Puka could be in a run. Puka was great. Tyreek Hill. Tyreek, yeah, Tyreek. Yeah, uh, but I think they got it right. And, 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 you know, they're playing in the Super Bowl. They're and playing he's a in big the Super Bowl. It, so. And he's a big reason. Yeah. And Tyreek them got sent home against Kansas City early, so... Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> the def the defensive player was awarded to your Steelers, mm -hmm. TJ Watt. Facts or fiction for this one? Yeah, I think, that, look, the, the defensive player of the year, as I just said, is really close. I mean, obviously, Miles Garrett is in there. Uh, there are so many great defensive players this year. Um, but TJ Watt was a reason that the Steelers won several games. He's the best player on that team. And they were literally winning with defense at one point this season. So I, I, I think that's, this is fact, but you can make an argument for a lot of defensive players this it's, year. It could be a facts and a fiction because Miles Garrett could get it. Mm -hmm. Roquan Smith can get it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you really wanted to give it to Bosa in San Francisco, I'm sure he could be in the running as well. Yeah, even though his a little bit of a slow down. start yeah. at the beginning of the season. But, but it, yeah. it, I mean, I guess they got it right. I'm trying to think who else. Oh, my man from Dallas. They got the six picks. Bland. Oh yeah, uh, Bland. Bland. Bland was tremendous this year. Um, I don't. Know, why is my brain not working? It's been a long day. Max Ma Crosby. Max Crosby. Yeah. Can get so it. it's you know it's it's a matter of preference because all of those guys are completely deserving this year. Um, Aiden Hutchinson was incredible. Yep. So there, there's so many great defensive players that could be in it. I just because it's so close, I don't think anyone's going to be outraged no. at this. You know, at this vote. So up next, the fans voted Coach of the Year to Texans first-year head coach D'Amico Ryans. Is this all facts? No, 100% facts. For sure. Anybody, anybody to say anything other than that, so funny because I got a call. Now that we're doing this, I got to call somebody that I used to work with who tried to make a case against him a couple weeks ago. For before him. He was making a case for, I don't even remember. It wasn't, it wasn't D'Amico Ryans. It was somebody like... Sean McVay or something weird like that. I mean, like Sean McVay did an incredible job. I am a huge Sean McVay advocate. I don't think Sean McVay gets the respect he deserves. No, he doesn't. And if does, Kyle he Shanahan doesn't end up winning the Super Bowl, 
I'm going to keep saying what I've been saying, which is he is the best coach in that division, and he has the hardware to prove it. Yes. So I, I'm, that's my bit on Sean. Yeah, McVay. but but, but D'Amico deserves come this. Come on, man. A rookie <laughs> quarterback, first time yeah, head without coach. Without question. Without question. No, no premier big time receivers. Nobody I mean, expected on, them to be anywhere near the playoffs. I mean, I thought they would win three the games. They did. Nobody talked about their roster at the beginning of the season. Nobody had any expectations of C.J. Stroud. Three games. Who, by the way, who was not the, the number one overall pick. No. So we just we just dismissed what happened with, with Bryce Young, which I'm actually proud of us as a media for doing that. We did not kill him. Just let this young man have a have a bad rookie season in peace, and we'll go back and 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 now next year we'll then we'll start lighting the flames. But like, <laughs> <laughs> just focus on the positive, which is C.J. Stroud. I'm with you. D'Amico absolutely deserves this. They had 100%. an incredible season. He deserves all the flowers. They did great. Okay, and finally, fans voted Baker Mayfield as the comeback player of the year. Did he deserve this? Well, I don't come back. I thought comeback player of the year. Yeah, I think he. I think he deserves it. It's facts, but I thought comeback player of the year was when the person was hurt. Yeah, I thought so too. I, I don't know the criteria. Are we blanking uh, on uh, on Baker being hurt? No, I mean he got banged up in Carolina a little bit, like and he then he went he to the then he went to the Rams. Bad year and then got better. That's bad the comeback standard. Better. How do we gauge a bad year now? Baker's had a couple. <laughs> No, he had he had he had a bad year in Carolina. Then he had a game or two decent yeah, in the Rams. Rams. Um, I mean, to me, comeback player is injury. I thought it was injury. So, I, you know I who, thought it was. You know so who, who would you guys put as your comeback player of the year? Then, well, I mean, obviously he was only injured for one game, but I think that we have completely overlooked the fact that Brock Purdy had surgery on his throwing arm. No, I can't do season. that. He played the whole. Season. Played the whole season. He, yeah. This is a this is a regular so season. So he award. has to miss the miss a significant amount of the season last year. Come back and have a a good year. Comeback player of the year that got hurt, missed some time. I would have to think about that because I'm I'm, I'm yeah. Drawing a blank I, 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 on I would who need some would options for a this. A lot of people were saying Demar Hamlin. Well, he didn't play that much. Play it though. Well, yeah, I guess you. I mean, if you can, yeah, I guess. This is a very nuanced talk. This is a very yeah, nuanced, that's a different uh, one. Yeah, this is this is. We need more clarification. Yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> let's move on. What qualifies uh, for comeback? So during media day, Travis Kelsey was asked about his brother Jason retiring. Here's what he had to say. You think Jason plays in that Brazil game? I think so. I don't, I don't know. I. I'm not a betting man, but uh, I think he's got some football left. What are the odds? What are the odds? Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know. I'm, not, I'm gonna leave that up to him. Travis, Travis. So this first question is for you, Joy. Do you think Jason Kelsey retires, or will we see him playing in 2024? <sighs> I think he will play. I think he was a little emotional after after the loss, which is understandable. Um, I think he's. I think if he does play, it will certainly be his last year. Um, I mean, retiring from the NFL, even as a great, is a very difficult choice to make, especially if you feel at all that you have any football left in you, as as Travis said. Sometimes the game makes a decision for you, obviously. Your body is shutting down. You're dealing with injuries. You're not as fast. You don't have your moves anymore. Maybe the league is not wanting you. They're not. No one's interested in signing you, and, and the decision is made for you. I think if you, in my opinion, if you have football left to play, you do it. Because it, it, you're never going to do that again. Now, that's that's a really personal decision. I remember having this conversation with my brother when he was going to retire about, you know, just the emotions that you're going to go through when you make that decision. That's not a decision that you take lightly. You talk to your wife about it. You talk to your kids about it. You talk to your family about it, obviously. And if it's not made for you, that is a, that you're choosing to walk away from something that is truly your identity, which is a very heavy thing to do. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't talk to nobody when I retired. You just made the choice? I just made the choice. Woke up the it's next probably morning. probably smart. Woke up the next morning and said, I'm done. Put in my paperwork. I was done. You know, it, it, what happens to me with guys that say they're going to retire, but they don't put in the paperwork immediately, mm -hmm. tells me they're not retiring yet. Right. Because if you put in your paperwork, your retirement paperwork, as soon as it's over with, you're done. You you start hanging around and, and dealing with the situation. You start feeling like, oh, I can play again. Now, maybe he's emotional, like you said. Me, I was like, but I'm done. I'm done. Put in my paperwork, dog. I'm done. I want to go do something different. Yeah, and that's, I, I, you're probably handling it the right way. Sometimes when you get too much feedback, No, I don't need any feedback. I don't to... need my kids talking about keep playing. <laughs> I don't need none of that. I don't need my homies. Box. No, I'm good. I don't, I'm done. It's a very... 
I think it's I think it's it's a very individual decision. Yeah. And if you still feel like you can play or you still want to play, in my opinion, you should because you you're not going to do this again. Yeah, of it course. Is, it's of course. there's no other opportunity in life that's going to be presented like that. So you should get everything out of it. But if you are done, yeah, you're done. You're done. You're done. <laughs> Did you have like a time where you were like, "Oh, I'm done." Like, oh yeah, I was done. So the season was over. <laughs> I was out. Deuces. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't. I wasn't tripping. I was. I balled out that last year. And I went to work at ESPN, and I'm like, I did the draft, and I said, you know what? I don't want to play football anymore. I'm done. You know, the world is so different now, too. When you have so many options, yeah. you have so many opportunities. Guys are aware that they're not going to play the sport forever, so you yeah. prepare your businesses. You're involved in other things while you're playing. Obviously, he has a podcast. He has a huge name now. He's people's sexiest guy, and all you know, like he's got a lot going <laughs> on outside of football. And you know, he's he's already has a name for himself. But it, it, but again, all of that is not the NFL. No, I get it. Yeah, and and, and so you got to think about it, Keyshawn. When I came into the league, I said all I wanted to play was 10 years anyway. So in my 10th year, I had already started processing mm. what I was going to do. I didn't want to play. I wouldn't want to 15 years, 20 years. Because, again, my goal was never to get a gold jacket. My goal was to make sure that your grandmother had a big-ass house. That was my goal. And did. And did. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that's the goal, though, right? Some people chase things. They yeah. want to chase rings. and They want to chase the gold jacket. Me, I'm like, I'm chasing the bag. So I could get my family up out these streets, mm -hmm. and that's it. I'm not chasing nothing else because I know how content I was in my career and what I did for the game and what I gave back to the game, what the game gave to me. So that's it was an easy decision. Yeah. No regrets at all. I'm out. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of the Kelseys, Travis had to set the record straight after a, a reporter alluded to him inventing the fade. <laughs> Take a listen. It's absolutely ridiculous, and to do it and to do it on February first to throw me to the wolves like that—that that was messed up, man. I don't want anything to do with that one, man. I, I, just, I, I got a good fade if you need it, though. It's a two on top, a nice high to mid fade with the taper in the back. But I didn't invent that. I just asked for it. <laughs> so, Dad, coming from a white guy and it's Black History Month, it's kind of wild. But <laughs> like, how rid ridiculous is this? No, it's not. It's look, man. Some people are not well educated, or or really don't understand, or uninformed. They're not informed in certain situations. At least Travis Kelsey realized. Wait a minute, man. It's February first. It's Black History Month. Why are you even asking me something like that when I know I took that style from somebody inside my locker room? All right. So I don't have a problem with it at all. I mean. He didn't invent the fade. All you got to do is go back and look at my hair way back in 96, <laughs> 95, 94. Right? I mean, you just go. You should say, I invented the fade. Yeah, there you go. I invented the fade. <laughs> All you got to do is go check the records. I had fades way back then. Oh, man. I don't have um, a problem with listen, it. Listen, Kelsey is aware of what's going on. Absolutely. Okay? He, he, he said the right thing. He knows he didn't invent that. And to the reporter who wrote that ridiculous piece, Please read books. Please go outside of your home. <laughs> yes. Get new friends. Like, talk to people. Please. It's really... Not informed, though. It's not... It's, they just not informed, Yeah, but man. it's... it's That's it, all. It, it, I know, Joy, but he, did, he just doesn't know. <laughs> the know. reporter? Doesn't know. Doesn't it's know. your job to know. You know, ain't gonna ask one know. person. You couldn't ask, like, one person, like, hey, how about you ask the barber that you're, that, like, I, hey, I like, don't what even, is this haircut? Joy. Did, did Travis Kelsey invent this haircut? Have you done this haircut before? Has someone asked for this haircut that doesn't look like Travis Kelsey? These are simple journalistic questions. No, I have true. a broadcast journalism degree. No, that's true. I have an honorary doctorate in broadcast <laughs> journalism. You are, it's your job to ask questions. But... There's certain people in certain industries that have certain styles they like to wear in their hair. Uh -huh. And people said that they they took it from Bo Derek with the what they see. Oh. I don't even want to, I don't even want to go there though. But, I'm this just is, saying, but this is the thing. Know? Like, if you are going to, and this is not Travis Kelsey's fault. We've pivoted now to the reporter. Yeah. yeah. If you are gonna write a story, that you're gonna your take job. the time. Yeah, of course. To to write this story. Ask some. I'm, but I'm maybe he was no looking at here. Ask, ask some, some fucking questions. questions. Ask some there fucking you go. questions. Like, there you go. Oh, you, it's your I job to you. ask questions. Thank you. I mean, I'll do it, but I don't know what we're doing around here. We're still in the building. Ask 
some fucking questions. Like, go go ask someone maybe, else. And maybe he did. He's looking for a hot shot moment. It's the Super Bowl. So if I can get Travis Kelsey to well, say... Well, you got, you got your moment, honey. But if I can get Travis Kelsey to say, yeah, I, I invented the fade. You see, I got an earring. I'm the, oh, no, then, no, you no, know. no. I'm not talking about the reporter that asked the question. Okay. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the, the, the reporter. What was it? The New York Times, right? Right. I'm yeah. talking about the reporter that wrote the article. Yeah, but the isn't article. that the same person who asked the question? Why would somebody ask the question? No, it, no, I don't think it was the same person. It, it better not be. have been the same who's person. Gonna, who's going to write a story? No, no, no. So they wrote the story and then everyone flipped out because the story said that everyone is asking for the Travis Kelsey. And everyone was like, y'all, it ain't the Travis Kelsey. Oh, it's okay, called a fade. It. He did not invent this. And then obviously, tra that's why Travis is like, they threw me to the wolves by... Yeah, we gonna, that we're, story we're gonna go in. We're gonna go in. You ain't taking that from us. <laughs> right. But yeah, we, Travis knows that. We so we're not way I'm back not in the military the days. <laughs> I'm not talking about the reporter that asked the question. Okay. I'm talking about the New York Times article. That article, the person who wrote that, yeah. it's your yeah. responsibility yeah. to ask questions. Yeah. And a simple question do would your be research. correct. A yeah. simple question would be, what is this haircut? What is this haircut? <laughs> So the a fate. confident Chad Ochocinco is all in on the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. So confident that he's even willing to put his divorce papers on it. Take a listen. <laughs> what podcast is he on? Chiefs win it. You're confident. Yeah, very confident. What are you Matter willing fact, to bet on it? What am I willing to bet? Yeah. If the Chiefs lose, I won't eat McDonald's anymore. Ever? Ever. What? Yeah. Wait, wait, whoa. That's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. That's wait, how, wait, wait, wait. That's, Hold how, up. that's how confident no, I am. No, no, no. I feel like the equivalent of that bet is like $5 million. I, like, Something like McDonald's that. is probably watching this like, what the hell? Okay. Matter of fact, this is rated PG, right? This is rated PG? You can say what you want. It's like, it's like yeah, Disney. Yeah. You can say what you wait, want. Go for it. Matter of fact, if, if the Chiefs lose, I'll divorce my wife and no more sex for the rest of the year. <laughs> lot you're putting on this i mean that's so, how confident i am so no mcdonald's a divorce a divorce and no sex and she's right there she's right there and she, yeah i don't care <laughs> joy what would you be willing to put on the line if you were feeling this confident i do not feel that confident <laughs> about either of these things i'm not betting neither and none of that none of that is on the board for me personally i think this is a very so even game uh i don't i don't really eat mcdonald's um Occasionally, you know, if it's a breakfast. I like McDonald's breakfast. No? No, I, I'm just asking. Oh, I mean, no, not often, but I, I will. You just don't seem like a McDonald's type. It would, not be a, it would not be a huge ask for me not to eat McDonald's ever again. <laughs> but I do like McDonald's breakfast occasionally. So it might, it might be an inconvenience for me at some point in life. Um, I don't feel, uh, it's the other stuff I'm talking about. I'm not married, so I don't need to get divorced. But I'm, I'm not giving up whatever else he's talking about. I'm out on that. But... I don't feel that confident about either of these teams yeah. that I would be willing to put anything as serious as he just said. I think this is a very even game. I'm picking the Chiefs because I made the mistake of picking against them in every single round of the playoffs this year. Now, I had to pick the Dolphins, obviously. What do I look like not picking the Dolphins and they end up winning? But I picked against them every time. I'm done picking against Andy Reid and, and the Chiefs and, and Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. I think they're playing at a very high level. And again, I think the defense is playing at a very high level, which no one is really talking about because obviously we default to offense and these quarterbacks. But I think the Kansas City defense is really good. On the flip side, Kyle Shanahan has been here multiple times now. They have a very high level defense. They've got seven all pros. Brock Purdy played at an MVP level this season. So I think this is a very even game. I'm hoping for a shootout, but... As much as I am picking the Chiefs and I think the Chiefs will win, am I going to come in here surprised Monday if Kyle no. Shanahan finally wins a Super Bowl and, you know, the defense plays at a really high level and the Chiefs look anything like they did during the regular season? No. Well, you already know the answer to me. I'm picking Kansas City, Keyshawn, and I You putting any of that on the line? No, man. I'm not listening to Chad. Chad just out there talking. Chad ain't getting divorced and he ain't... He ain't getting divorced. First of all, he's not getting divorced and his ass is not gonna stop eating McDonald's. That I know for a fact. Yeah. So he just, as they, as, as, as y'all say, he capping. <laughs> okay, well. It's not, it sounds good. It's very convincing though. <laughs> well, he went further by saying he's taking Chiefs receiver Kadarius Tony to score the first touchdown. Take a hmm. listen. Score. I know you mentioned it a little bit off the top. Right. Maybe somebody that not everyone's thinking. If you had to pick, who you got? First touchdown. Can I do something? Can, can, I, can I go out on a limb? Yes, sir. Because I'm sure he's probably going to play. I'm sure he's going to suit up because it's a big game. Kadarius Tony. Wow. 
Wow, that is hot. That is a hot it, it, take. It, it's so unexpected, and I really think they're going to put the ball in his hands just to get him the confidence that he needs that he hasn't had. Yeah. Just look, just to get him going. I don't Chad, know why. I, I, man, he, like, It's unexpected. But you asked me, and that's what I'm going with. I love it. I mean, I don't even see the I don't even see the odds. If you can pull hey. him up, is he on the board? It's plus seven thousand. Oh, that's a get rich play right listen, there. Listen, I'm, I'm listen. Ten bucks, he gets you seven hundred. If you if you're gonna do it, go all in. Wow. I mean, he. <laughs> so the odds are plus seven thousand. So is this a sharp bet? Would you take it, or is Ocho copping again? For ten dollars. Ten dollars. You win seven hundred. Yeah, I'm about to go do that right now. <laughs> what you mean? I've spent $10 on far worse. <laughs> yeah, I'll put a G on it. A G? Yeah. Because he told you to? No, but it's a, if, if the odds are such, yeah. it's $1,000 and you betting. Oh, okay. You we, know, we, that's 70 grand. We have a different relationship with money. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, it's a $1,000 to me is like a, a YSL bag. I'm going to be upset. Yeah, but guess what? If you hit, yeah, you if I get hit, the whole I can get store. the whole store. But if I don't, I don't have the whole store or my bag. Yeah, but... this is See, this is why I'm a, I'm a fun gambler. Like, I like to do the fun... I'm going to do the $10. $10, yeah. Because if I win $700, i am going to be... I'm going to go nuts. I'm yeah, going to be the if most you, happy if person. If you are... It's happy versus unhappy for me when it yeah, comes to Yeah, but if you're really feeling it and you feel good that that's really it, and you know that that's you feel like that's going to be yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to put that. more on the you know? actual game. You can do that too. It Which just might depends on what's your appetite, play. though. For gaming, I don't. I, it, it just depends on what I your like appetite to have is. fun. I do. I like to do a little sprinkle. I hear you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I'm going to be in Vegas this weekend, but when it comes to sports betting, I like to do a little sprinkle. The other kind of gambling, I don't worry about because you just go with men. You just go with me. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I ran out of money. I have to go. Well, speaking of betting, Dad, we heard you lost two hundred and fifty grand in Vegas in four minutes. Yes, that is correct. I right have done that. So I should not be it. taking any advice from you. Let's hear it. Let's no, hear but when story. you gaming, when you gambling, when you young and you having fun, right? And you gambling, you you lose. I mean, that's just Keyshawn Jr. or you win. You remember what I just said about going to the uh, casino with men? I did. This is why. <laughs> no, no, but check this out, though. You, you. I'm not losing my money. But I also done won. But this is when you're gambling, though. You you gambling, and what happens is if you put big money out on the table, right. and all and of a sudden you it. get a bad run, you're going to get your ass toe up. But then on the flip side, if you get a great run, you can walk out smiling. It just depends on the appetite at that point in time. I hear you. You know? I mean, many people have had crazy gambling experiences. It just depends on what your appetite is. Yeah, I hear you. I just like to have a good time. I want to leave knowing I had a good time. And if I lose, that's okay. I had a I'm, good time. I'm, I'm just joy when 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 I was a gambler, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It was boring sitting there with you. And all you betting is five dollars. <laughs> I can't I, I can't sit there and stress myself out. The poll I just can't the poll of the these experiences would disagree. <laughs> no, I understand. I'm a very that. fun hang <laughs> in the in the casino. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> And what I'm going to do for you, what I'm going to do for you that you will thank me for later is when you do start to get them little stacks up, while you not looking, I'm going to just pull a few aside. No, that's real talk. Hey, put look. them in my purse. No, the wing, the, so hey. when you said, damn, I lost all this. No, no, Guess Joy. what, babe? Joy. 5000 right here I in my swear, bag. Joy, I swear to you. Now, I'm going to one of these for saving you. You got to have a wing, man, yes. when you game. If you go in there by yourself. It's a wrap. You're going to get fucked over. Exactly. I'm just telling you, you got to have a wing person. I am an excellent wing man. And yep. say, hey, look to the right. You look and they just whoop, boom whoop. and keep it moving. No, you, you're you right about that. Whoop. No, you're 100% right. In the bag. When I you lost, don't even notice. When I lost the 250 in like five minutes, my I had my <laughs> wing man with me, but he went to the restroom. He just said, hold on now. Four, get the facts four. Correct. Yeah, it was like four, four or five minutes. minutes. Yeah, four or five minutes, whatever. My wing man went to the restroom. And I was chasing at that point. Mm -hmm. So I still had my marker and I had money on it. And I said, man, just give me that. And I just put it down. And I... What were you playing? Blackjack. Mm. And so everything was lined up perfectly, right? I had the four hands. <sighs> I had the face cards. Boom, boom, boom. Split. I had like eights and splits and everything was cool. I was, I was high at a 20, low at an 18. Bam. And they rolled over the deuce. Boom, a three. Boom. I said, damn. Then it was like a two. Bam. Uh. Then the number got lower. Bam. Then it was low and it was low. It was low. And then all he said was, sorry, Mr. J. It's, 
and took the collected, oh! the, look, collect, collected the chips, Joy. Oh, I hate it. And then I said, man, let me see the last card. Man, he flipped it over. It was a face card. Said, this is bullshit, man. It's rigged. I got to get up out of here. And I left and went back to L.A. Had just landed in Vegas from Tampa Bay with my teammates. I got back on the jet, called the pilot, got back on the jet, went to L.A., told him, y'all stay in Vegas. Meet me in L.A. When y'all ready to go back home, we'll go back home. Yeah, I would have left, too. Oh, I was so sick. Sick I mean, I would never dog. be in a situation, but if I could imagine that I would do something like that. Oh, I, I done seen it. some worse ones than that. Oh, that yeah, yeah, nothing. yeah. Listen, I, uh, my, I done watch uh, Tiger. I done watch Charles. I done watch Michael. I done watch some bad stuff. I have seen some horrible <laughs> things as well, some very tragic outcomes, um, but that is why I'm the wingman. Well, allow me to say thank you for joining me on this podcast. Thank you for I having much me. much appreciate it. So much. That's a wrap today. Appreciate the lovely Joy Taylor for joining the show. Don't forget to subscribe. And follow All Facts Podcast on social media. Until then, you know what time it is. I'm out. Keyshawn, peace.